The Luxottica Group is an Italian eyewear conglomerate and the largest manufacturer of eyewear in the world. The company owns several major retailers in the United States and is manufacturing and licensing deals with some of the world's largest brands. Luxottica's founder, Leonardo Del Vecchio, is Italy's second richest man and is considered one of the country's most storied entrepreneurs alongside Giorgio Armani, chocolatier Michel Ferrero and Silvio Berlusconi. Let's take a look at how he did it. Leonardo Del Vecchio was born in Italy in 1935, but spent most of his childhood in an orphanage as his widowed mother struggled to support young Leonardo and his four siblings. He was raised by nuns and entered the world of work as an apprentice at a car and eyewear factory so that he could afford to pay for design school. As a young man, the world of eyewear fascinated a young Leonardo and he moved to Italy's eyewear capital, Agordo, to learn the ins and outs of the industry. A few years later, Del Vecchio founded La Gazzotica in 1961 in Agordo, using the skills he had learned from making moulds for glasses at a previous job. The inspiration for the name came from the combination of the Italian for light and optics, hence Luxottica. The original factory was in a porter cabin in the Dolomites, but that has grown significantly since then. The company originally manufactured components and accessories for the optical industry, but he soon transformed the company from supplier to manufacturer after selling Luxottica branded frames at the Mido Trade Fair, an eyewear show in Milan. Luxottica's frames were so successful that in 1971, the company ended contract manufacturing to focus purely on in-house designed glasses. Despite not studying economics, Del Vecchio realised that he could make more money through vertical integration, a process of acquiring businesses within the glass manufacturing process. By mastering all the technologies involved in the spectacle manufacturing process, he realised Luxottica could be very competitive on price and increase margins drastically. The first step in expansion came in 1974 with the purchase of Scaroni, an Italian wholesale distributor. This was the start of the integration strategy that would underpin global mergers in the coming years. Scaroni was initially brought in as a partner after Del Vecchio's two investors called in loans on their investments, but he ended up buying out his new partner within a year. In the 1980s, the glasses industry underwent a revolution and they were transformed from a necessary medical device to a fashion accessory for the face. Simply put, people had only worn glasses if they had to, but now that had all changed. Del Vecchio spotted this opportunity early and jumped on the trend by partnering with designer brands to make frames for glasses and sunglasses. He first partnered with Giorgio Armani in 1988 and now has deals with a roster of the biggest names in fashion, including Chanel, Burberry and Ralph Lauren. Once eyewear became face jewellery, Luxottica could charge a healthy markup for their products. The company was listed in New York in 1990 and in Milan by 2000. The capital raised was used to acquire a number of other businesses that included Vogue Eyewear, Persil, Ray-Ban and Sunglasses Hut. Luxottica improved these brands in the coming years to boost product and profit. One of the biggest brands in their stable is Ray-Ban, which was acquired for $630 million in 1999. Changes were immediately made to the company, with a number of outdated factories closed down and manufacturing moved to Italy. They also switched from selling in low market outlets to high end stores, which in turn resulted in higher prices, but a better quality for consumers. The price move was heavily criticised as Luxottica stopped selling Ray-Ban sunglasses for over a year and dramatically increased the price from the $30 a pair customers had paid before the buyout. Del Vecchio continued on his quest to dominate the eye market and wanted control over the entire operation from manufacturing to retailing. The company set up iMed in 1999, which has grown to become the second largest vision insurance company in the world, and LensCrafter, who sell Luxottica products and offer eye tests to customers. The fashion houses who partner with the company often send in sketches as inspiration for Luxottica's design team, who then tweak these designs to make them attractive and functional. In 2004, Del Vecchio stood down as CEO 
handing over control to a respected industry veteran, Andrea Guerra. Del Vecchio admitted that he did not want any of his children to succeed him, but he still visits the company's factory, often via helicopter, and asks only one question. What do you have to show me that is new? Del Vecchio returned in 2014 as executive chairman, promising to do deals and double the group's revenue. In 2007, after a dispute with Oakley, Luxottica ended up buying the company for $2.1 billion. While that may sound like a lot of money for the company, Luxottica had refused to stock Oakley products in their stores since 1996, as they saw them as a direct competitor to Ray-Ban, forcing the share price down significantly. And while Oakley recovered, they had to strike out with other companies to main sales. Luxottica did eventually agree to stock Oakley in Sunglasses Hut, but at a significantly lower number than they had in 2007. To put it simply, if brands want to sell glasses, they want to be in Luxottica's chain of stores. Oakley found out the hard way, and Luxottica bought another stable business that required little restructuring and could be sold right away. Luxottica's next target was Essilor, a French-based manufacturer who were the world's largest lens maker. Following four years of negotiations, Luxottica merged with Essilor in 2017 at a cost of 49 billion euros to create a new company with more than 140,000 employees and sales in over 150 countries around the world. However, the acquisition has not been smooth, with disagreements over who should run the new company and the strategy that it should take. Initially, there were two co-CEOs who sat under Del Vecchio as executive chairman. Francesco Milleri is now the main CEO, but Paul de Ceylon is deputy CEO, bringing into question whether decisions regarding strategy can be made quickly and with little confusion. In more recent years, the company has continued with the acquisitions to increase growth. Luxottica agreed a deal to purchase a 72.6% stake in Grand Vision, Europe's largest optician for $7 billion in 2019. The deal saw the company expand primarily in European retail by adding more than 7,200 stores and 37,000 employees. However, the acquisition was under significant scrutiny and was only approved by the European Commission in March 2022 on the condition that Luxottica sold more than 350 stores across Belgium, Italy and the Netherlands. As of 2021, Luxottica operate over 10,700 stores and had annual revenues of 14.4 billion euros. Almost half of this comes from the United States, where they run a large number of brands and stores from. Some have been critical of Luxottica's power in the industry, as they control market share and rarely innovate. Glasses are still made from a few pieces of plastic, glasses for the lenses and a few screws. The only innovation that industrial analysts can give as an example is Google Glass. That did not catch on. However, Ray-Ban has recently launched glasses integrated with a camera. Let's see how that goes. A lack of competition means that prices will remain high and potentially harmful for consumers in the long term. Luxottica are a price maker, allowing the company to set prices that competition follows. The company has argued that while two pairs of glasses may look identical, they utilise superior manufacturing to ensure comfort and functionality compared with significantly cheaper frames available from other competitors. Whether Luxottica is deemed too powerful due to their control of the eyewear market, they may be broken up, but either way, consumers will keep buying and Luxottica will keep selling.